down the steep and rocky road to the pounding Pacific, at Palos Verde, California, is a natural water playground that offers the thrill of a high wire act plus the zip of a roller coaster. As pretty a shoreline picture as can be found, curves to the right and curves to the left. What look like streamlined breadboards are really surfboards, light and durable, built to ride the waves like a water toboggan. All you have to do is hitch your surfboard to a wave, take a deep breath, and then be gone with the wind and the waves. It's just good, clean fun for these water babies who like nothing better than to be rolled in the cradle of the deep. It's an all-wave hookup with Old Devil Sea that takes these surf riders from coast to coast. Here's a fellow who's using his head to get along in the world. Surf riding is an excellent test of balance. Take, for example, this young lady. The right wave comes along, and with a bit of knee action, she's on. She's off. She gets her balance. No. The rolling surf does all the work. The idea is simple. Just relax completely. There's a new thrill watching these high-riding surf riders take the crest of the wave, an age-old South Sea custom brought up to date. For landlubbers who want to go down to the sea, there's nothing like an ocean-going ironing board, riding a permanent wave that never loses its curl. Hot, 112 degrees in the shade. Isolated from the rest of the world is the Wild Rose CCC camp at the western rim of Death Valley. Its only communication with civilization is radio. And this hard-working truck, known by the boys as the Trona Flyer. Every day it battles the flaming, blazing heat of the desert to carry the mail and supplies from the village of Trona to camp headquarters in Death Valley. The run back to camp begins easily enough. But ahead is a road that has tested the stamina of man since the first pioneers drove their oxen and burrows through this desert wasteland. The burning hot dust rises like a tropical storm in the oven-baked hills and valleys, where once men died a death even more horrible than death from thirst. Today, markers warn of the hidden danger of poison springs. In Death Valley, only the strong survive. As if the road and heat were not enough, the steepest of mountain grades adds to this torture test. The climb begins. It's an old trick for the throne of Lyre, now nearing a remarkable record of almost 100,000 miles traveled in this relentless climate and landscape. The flyer speeds by old landmarks, a ghost town, somber relic of forgotten yesterdays, empty roads, silent homes, abandoned stores. But it's home again. 60 miles in 70 minutes. The flyer is in, and it's good news that travels fast. So drop everything and come a-running. No time for radio, and don't dress for the mailman. There's nothing like a letter from home. Or, if it's a special occasion, maybe a package or two. Something like a nice box of creamy chocolates that simply melt in your hands. Help yourself. Take a piece. Take two pieces. Or oh, take a spoonful. <laughs> Shades of the great train robbery. He's up to no good, down flat on his face. It's nice work, and he's got it. Well, he'll be quick. But that's nothing to get all steamed up about. Here they are, members of a new American cult. They're crazy, every one of them. Camera crazy. It's a new kind of craze that brings a camera club on a special train to the Père Marquette yards and repair shops, where they can snap their shutters to their heart's content. Get the picture no matter what the cost. In candid photography, the angle is the thing, and make it dizzy. Smoke and steel and old iron horses are uncomplaining camera subjects who just don't care how they look before the inquisitive camera eye. Anything for a picture, even to the extent of going around in circles for one. To be a candid cameraman, you've got to be an acrobat, a juggler, and a professional gate crasher. No waiting for the corner drugstore's 24-hour developing service, not for this demon of the tin types. Made to order is this portable dark room, a luggage compartment, airtight and with never a chance for a film fog. Time out for just a minute or two. And then out comes the negative, clear as a baby's eye and twice as natural. Click, click, and cluck. Every pack has its joker. <coughs> There's
there's gunplay going on, and they're loading them, not with lead, but with lead paint. Yes, sir, the police of Elkhart, Indiana, are painting the town. Press this button, and bang goes the first gun. When the driver hears the report, he jams on his brakes, and bang goes the second gun. The stage is set for some novel gunplay in the interest of safety. When they're rolling, the officer beside the driver presses the button. All to prove just how quick is a quick stop. Two shots and two pellets of paint bit the pavement. The distance between the marks shows the driver's reaction time, just how far the car traveled while he was getting his foot down on that brake pedal. 33 feet at 30 miles an hour, and that's about average for driver reaction time. His braking efficiency, excellent, gauged by the distance from the last paint splash to the front bumper. For accurately checking the efficiency of a driver and his brakes, it's a bang-up idea. Meet the Buck of Barnegat, New Jersey. He's a deer. Everywhere that Mama goes, he's got to go, too. Come on, Pete, shake a leg, or Mama spank. a boy. Pete is a three-year-old, belonging to the Beckett family. They found this buck in the woods when he was no bigger than a nickel, and he's been a member of the family ever since. Pete's all keyed up to go shopping, and Mama's all keyed up to lock him up, only she doesn't need a key. A lot of folks around Barnegat know Pete, but somebody is always getting a surprise. Hi, Toots. Imagine that. Now, how the dickens can they get a deer into that back seat? Home again, and you've got to admit the Becketts bring him back alive. Yes, sir, Pete certainly does pick the soft spots. Well, how about a little snooze before dinner? How would you like to have this streamlined pet sleeping on your nice clean spreads? What's that? Food! When Pete smells food, the shut-eye is over. Yes, sir, he'll have to look into that smell. Hey, keep your big nose out of things. None of that, my fine antlered friend. Pete knows more than one way of getting a little snack. And when no one's looking, he's usually up to mischief. Mice in the kitchen, ants in the pantry, deer in the cupboards. What a life, what a life. There's nothing bashful about Pete. He's always sticking his nose into something. Deer is never out of season in the Beckett home. In fact, the Becketts are one family that has venison at every meal. Well, this certainly beats getting your antlers up over somebody's mantle. (laughs) 